Hi everybody, welcome to our next lecture on audio coding, this time about physiological effects. So here you can see um, which block I'm talking about. Basically we are trying to obtain a psychoacoustic model for controlling the quantization and coding of our system. Right, so far we had the filter bank and then we saw we can quantize the subband values such that the noise possibly stays below the threshold of hearing. And this is uh, the goal for our psychoacoustic model. Right, so the psychoacoustic model should, should tell us how we should choose the quantization step size such that the quantization errors or the quantization noise stay below the masking threshold of the ear such that they are inaudible. And for that, we use um, physiological effects, meaning what's going on in the ear, in the signal processing in the ear. Um, and this is captured by the terms loudness, critical bands, masking in the frequency domain, in the time domain, and binaural cues, because we have um, two ears for directivity. Yeah, so first the structure of the human ear. Here you can see the inner structure. So here's the outer ear, the pinna, and the sound comes in through the ear canal. And then we have the eardrum. And this eardrum vibrates with the incoming sound. And this vibration is then um, basically um, produced here for uh, the cochlea. So we have this structure here. And the structure is basically kind of like gears in the car, right? So this basically makes uh, uh, the vibrations of the eardrum, making it into smaller vibrations but with more force into the cochlea because the cochlea is filled with fluid, right? So on the outer ear we have air and then in the cochlea we have a fluid which um, this then also makes vibrate. And since we have changing diameters here in this um, structure, we get resonances at different places in this cochlea. And that means basically we have a time frequency decomposition going on here. Depending on which place is resonating, this depends on the frequency. And that's why we have different nerve cells ending at different places here at this cochlea and each nerve ending is then detecting certain frequencies. So this is basically like a filter bank. Yeah, so here an overview, the eardrum transforms sound waves into vibrations. Then the ossicular bones, they transfer the mechanical vibrations to the cochlea. So this is kind of like the gearbox in a car from the engine to uh, the wheels, so that they have the right uh, um, torque and um, speed. And then we have the cochlear structure. Inside they have traveling waves along the length of the so-called glazilla membrane inside. And then we have those neural receptors, which are connected along the length of the basilar membrane. And these convert these traveling waves into uh, chemical and electrical signals transmitted to the brain. So depending where we have the resonance, we get stronger outputs towards the brain. So here you can see the basilar membrane here. And this is basically unrolling the cochlea. You can see here, this is like rolled up here. And here, this is unrolled. Yeah, and here you can see a cross section of the cochlea here too. So there's a the cochlea. And here you can see in the middle we have this basilar membrane uh, where we have um, the nerves uh, placed, the nerve endings, which detect the vibrations inside. Yeah, so it's. Um, kind of an a very intricate structure for decomposing the signal into a different frequency components. Yeah, so here you can see more detail of it. Yeah, but actually for our model, those details um, usually don't matter. 
Yeah, so this is what I just said. We have those resonances. So here we have horizontally the distance from the entrance of the cochlea. And at different places, depending on the diameter of the cochlea at that place, we have different resonance frequencies. So in the beginning, we have the highest frequencies. So here we have 6400 hertz. You can see the displacement, which means the oscillation of the fluid. And here for 1600 hertz and here for 400 hertz. So um, the resonances for the highest frequencies are closest to the entrance and then the low frequencies travel furthest, uh, farthest inside um, the cochlea. So this results in a frequency selectivity of the basilar membrane. And we have a traveling wave which envelopes uh, occur at a resp uh, as in response to an acoustic tone um, containing certain frequencies like 400 hertz, 1600 hertz and 6400 hertz. And the peak responses for each sinusoid are localized along the membrane surface with each peak occurring at a particular distance from the oval win window, the cochlear input. So this is basically our cochlea filter bank. Yeah. And here you can see the frequency selectivity of our resulting filter bank on the basilar membrane here as a simulation. Here you can see from 14 hertz up to about yeah, you know, here's 20, 21 kilohertz, and you can see here there's no output basically. Um, so it goes up to about here, and um, this is the basilar membrane amplitude. So we, you can see we have different peaks at different frequencies. Yeah, so here you can see um, the frequencies here. We have a fundamental frequency of 220 hertz appearing here. Then we have 440, again double 880, and so on. So here you can see the harmonics, and here you can see the resulting output of the basilar membrane. Yeah, so this can be nicely represented as this type of filter bank here. So we have, again, our unrolled cochlea here. And here you can see the resulting um, responses of this filter bank. Right. Yeah, so we have a bank of highly overlapping bandpass filters in this way. The magnitude responses, they are asymmetric and nonlinear, which means they are level dependent. So that's also kind of unusual, since usually we deal with linear systems in um, signal processing. And we also have a non-uniform bandwidth. The bandwidth increase with increasing frequency. And this is also different from our filter banks that we saw, saw so far, where every subband filter has the same bandwidth. So here they increase with increasing um, center frequency. Yeah, and um, that's important for our um, psychoacoustic model, as we will see. So here you can see the frequency and level range of human hearing, 200, 100, 50, 20. So this is 20 hertz. Right. And here you can see um, the sound intensity level and here the sound pressure level. And here is the threshold inquired of an average ear. So here you can see it, the solid line is this threshold inquired. So this is a very low sound level. And you can also see here in the mid-range, like between 1 and about 5 kilohertz, we have the highest sensitivity. And if you go to very low frequencies, 20 hertz, um, then the um, sensitivity, uh, sensitivity becomes much less. Right here we have a increased threshold, which means we need much more sound pressure level before we can hear this frequency. 
So actually you can see here we need about 70 dB at 20 Hertz. Um, so that's a lot. Similar at the very high frequencies, you can see here at the very high frequencies we have a very steep increase of um, the masking threshold, which means we need a correspondingly higher sound level for us to hear anything. So here, for instance, at 15 kilohertz, it ri it, raise, it rises a lot, so a steep increase here. So again, we need 60, 70, 80 dB before we can hear a tone at that frequency. And here you can see, as a comparison, speech is in this range of 60 dB and from about 200 hertz to about 8 kilohertz here. Music has a little bit wider range of intensities and frequencies. And here this dotted line uh, tells us the limit of damage risk. So if we have sound pressure levels above about 100 dB, um, we, we risk um, permanent damage. At least um, temporary damage. And then here there's the threshold of pain. Um, so this is where we can actually feel pain and this is uh, basically meaning immediate damage. Yeah, so I, uh, I just mentioned that this solid line means that we have an average um, a cochlea. And here you can see the distribution. So we can see here this um, solid line is 50%. And then the dashed lines show the percentiles between 10% and 90%. So 10% are better than this and another 10% are worse than um, the upper curve. Yeah, so these are the hearing thresholds of 100 persons with normal hearing for sine tones, where 50% is the median. And for this solid line, we can see that we get um, this approximation. So this formula here that we see is a mathematical um, approximation to this curve here. So there is no deep meaning behind it, it's just an approximation of this curve, such that we don't need to store it as a table, for instance. Yeah, so this is actually quite practical for our psychoacoustic model that we have this formula. Yeah, and this curve also depends on age. Here you can see it. So young people at age 20 years, they can hear more towards higher frequencies, as you can see. So it's more sensitivity here between, say, 2 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz, and then also for the higher frequencies. And when people age, you can see the curve for 40 years and here for 60 years, then the ability to hear high frequencies reduces. So you can see we go from 16 to maybe 12 to maybe 10 year, 10 kilohertz as people age. Yeah, this is actually something that we can also test. We can simply produce um, a tone, right? And uh, I have this program to, um, tonearc.py and it generates a sine tone with a frequency as specified in the argument as hertz. So for instance, we can play tones at frequencies of 1000, 2000, 4000, 8000, and 16000 hertz. And here we will observe that they all have the same sound level, but we hear them with different intensity according to the threshold inquired. The higher the distance above the threshold, the louder they appear. Below the threshold, they are inaudible. And most people don't hear the 16 thousand hertz tone anymore because it is below this threshold. So let's try. So let me open a terminal here. And you know, let me make it a little bit bigger here. And then we can try to let it run. So I type Python 3 tone arc dot py and start with 1000. So this was a 1000 hertz tone 
um, for about one second. So now we try 2000 Hz doubling. Next 4000. Now 8000. And now 16000. Oh. 16000. So many people won't hear the 16,000 anymore. So we can go down to say 12,000. Try 13,000. And then you can see where your limit is. Right. So everybody will have a slightly different limit. Um, so this shows you the differences um, between different people and at different ages and it also shows in general this is where the limit is so we don't need to um, transmit and encode frequencies above this limit so usually above 16 kilohertz um, is not transmitted also depending on the bitrate when you have low bitrate then actually what's often is done that the high frequencies are cut so that say if you don't have enough bits, then you go down to 15 kilohertz, 12 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, because that's the range where people don't hear that much anyway. Yeah, so that's an important effect that we will use for coding to save bits. Yeah, so here you can see more detail about what happens with age, particularly here at the high frequencies. So you can see when people age, actually the sensitivity falls. So here we have the hearing threshold. And um, right, so here you can see you need, when you go down, you need a higher sound pressure level. That means when the cur curves go down, you become less sensitive. So here in the oldest um, age range, you have the least sensitivity. And that's very similar between males and females. And um, yeah, you can see the standard deviation. There's also a lot of deviation um, when people age. Yeah, so the figures on the left are average pure, uh, pure tone audiograms in dB hearing loss. So audiograms means um, a plot like this, where you have the sensitivity sensitivity over frequency for men and women grouped by the age in decades. Yeah, so the extended frequency range is zoomed for clarity as you can see here. And on the right you have a pure tone threshold standard deviation of all participants as a function of frequency. And here the parameter is in 10 year groups. So same as on the basically the same as on the left hand side. Yeah, then we get to the so-called loudness level. So the loudness, abbreviated capital N, is a psychological concept to describe the magnitude of an auditory sensation, the loudness of a sound, measured in zone. So this is basically our sensation of how loud a tone is. A loudness level LN is a sound of a sound is measured in phone. And LN of a sound is the sound pressure of a 1 kHz tone, which is as loud as the sound. So this is used as a comparison, this 1 kHz tone. So here you can see a few equal loudness contours and um, those equal loudness contours are of pure tones in a free sound field and the parameter is expressed in loudness level LN and also loudness capital N. So here you can see it. This is the loudness level in phones and this is um, the loudness in zone. And when you look at it, um, each 10 phone 
means a doubling in the zones. So here we go from 80 to 100. So it's twice a doubling from 80 to 90 and from 90 to 100. So here we have those two doublings, um, 16 to 32 and 32 to 64. So each 10 phones means a doubling in the zones. Yeah, so here we can observe that the sensitivity of the human ear is a function of frequency, right? It changes over frequency. And it is most sensitive to sounds around 2 to 4 kilohertz. So here in this range, right? And this is actually, when you look at it, this shape here is very similar to the threshold of hearing. So here you have the hearing threshold down here, right? And uh, the other curves for um, equal loudness, which means the tones um, sound equal loud, follow this shape quite nicely, right? Except here maybe at the very low frequencies, but they follow it quite nicely. So that means, as I mentioned, the distance to the hearing threshold gives you an impression about how loud a sound appears. The more distance above the hearing threshold, the more louder it appears. Right? And here you can see um, two different measurements here the solid line is uh, new contours, newer measurements, and the dashed ones are old measurements from 1933. Yeah, so that leads me to this last slide. Um, this gives you an impression about um, how loud um, sounds are. So we can express it as a sound pressure. So here we have the sound pressure in Pascal. So Pascal is a unit for air pressure and this gives us the change of air pressure for the sound right so here you can see 100 pascal is the threshold of pain so that's way too much here we have hearing damage during short-term effect 20 pascal and here you can also see in the next column um, the db numbers the corresponding db numbers and the db numbers are obtained by using 20 micropascal as a reference pressure, right? So basically to compute the dB number from this Pascal number, you take this Pascal number divided by the reference level, 20 micropascal, which I have here. So you divide by it, and then you take 20 times log 10, um, log base 10 of it, so to turn it into a dB number. So then you get those numbers here. So and here you can see hearing damage, 120 dB. So we already saw 100 dB above 100 dB is uh, causing hearing damage. So this is for short term. So even for short, uh, when, when you have this sound pressure, even short term exposure leads to hearing damage. Then we have a jet engine at a 100 meter distance. It's 110 to 140 meters. So that's already enough to cause hearing damage. Here you can see the corresponding loudness in zone. A jackhammer at one meter distance, so it's already really loud, or a discotheque um, has about the same sound pressure level. It's about 100 dB. So in a discotheque, it's better to have ear protection. Otherwise, for long-term exposure, you risk hearing damage. Yeah, so hearing damage can occur during a long-term exposure at about 90 dB sound pressure level or above. Major road, here is 80 to 90 dB, quite loud. A passenger car in 10 meter distance is about 60 to 80 dB. TV set at home level, one meter distance is about 60 dB. And that's the same as a normal talking in about one meter distance. So if you talk to somebody um, and you have a normal distance like one meter, this uh, results in 40 to 60 dB sound pressure level. And so this is actually a good um, everyday comparison. Uh, comparison. Um, so if um, speech is usually in this range, 40 to 60 dB. In a very calm room, you have about 20 to 30 dB. So 20 to 30 dB is, is really quiet. And uh, if you have a sound pressure meter, um, sound pressure level meter, then um, in a very quiet room where you basically hear nothing uh, but maybe a little hiss, um, this is 20 to 30 dB. So this is very quiet. 
yeah, and 10 dB is um, yeah, even quieter. And the auditory threshold is around 0 dB. Okay, yeah, so this should be it for today. Thanks for your attention and see you next time.